Today we have one of the greatest men that I know, a man that I've come to know, respect, and to love. He's a tremendous human being. Uh, he has nothing but energy uh, and love for trying to help people. And uh, he's come around to some more understanding in terms of nutrition and how nutrition can help us besides sitting on an operating table and having to get cut up. He's looking at being more preventative, more preventative. And that's what we really need in our community. So I'm not going to say much more because I could, and I would just keep rambling on. Let's bring to the podium, let's welcome one of our dearest friends, Dr. Terry Mason. As we talk about health, you could put a clinic on every corner and a doctor in every door in America, but it wouldn't make us healthy. Wouldn't do it. All the things that clinics, doctors, nurses, hospitals, all that stuff does, we spend $2 trillion there. But if we look at how much of that impacts overall health, it's only about 10%. So what I believe is missing is this whole mental. I mean, we even, we even segregate mental health. We call it different. And I don't know how you could have any kind of health if your brain is not healthy. So we need to think about how we redefine this whole thing. And lastly, you can't do any of this if you take the spiritual component out. Because it's the spiritual component that really guides all of the rest of it. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that. We have an organ in our body called our heart. And the heart is nothing more than a pump. And it takes the blood. In this case, I'm going to use when it has oxygen in it. And the left side of the heart pumps the blood after it's come back from the lungs and picked up the oxygen. And it pumps it to all the places in the body. But as it's pumping it out, it's also pushing the old blood that doesn't have any oxygen in it anymore. It's pushing it back. And that blood also goes through, and that's the same not only for the blood that contains new oxygen, but we have an organ called the liver. We have organs called kidneys. We have an organ called the pancreas. We have all these organs that serve to do different things to clean our blood, clean in a very generic sense and it dumps it all back into the left side of our heart to push it back out. Same way that this water from the, out in the city gets pumped to everybody's house in, this, in the city. Now, when the pumps don't work, you go to turn on the water, nothing's going to happen. And when our pump doesn't work, we die. Now, the biggest problem that we have in America is a problem with all of our pipes. Just as a city, which should replace somewhere around 10% of all of the sewer, pipes, and all that stuff every year because of the, bu the budget has never been able to do more than about one-tenth of that. And those pipes become damaged. Those pipes have deposits that build up inside of them. Our pipes have the same thing. And when our pipes get stuff like rust on the inside, it's come, it comes from the fact that the things that we're eating, I am absolutely convinced, absolutely convinced, that America has eaten itself into death. And we can eat ourselves back into life. And the reason that we're eating ourselves into death is because the interests that really should have our health in mind do not. It's all about profit. So what happens is we're now inserting some stuff into our system that is not good. And if you were to like take your tongue and lick the inside lining of your jaw, is nice and smooth, right? But because of the stuff that we eat, particularly the stuff that contains a lot of cholesterol or it's highly processed, and I'll explain what those things are, but it damages that inside lining of the blood vessel. The body is always, it's a perfectly designed in, uh, being, and it always looks to heal itself. So part of its healing, it's like when you cut yourself or you scrape yourself and you get a scab, and that scab provides a protective covering while the healing is taking place underneath. Well, the same thing happens to our blood vessels sort of on the inside. There's a scab that sort of happens while the blood vessel is trying to heal. But it really can't heal because we keep adding insult to it. In other words, it'd be like pulling the scab off all the time. It would heal. And it goes up into your brain. 
and it doesn't allow the blood to get past that part where that piece of scab is, we call that a stroke. If it happens on our heart, on our pump, we call it a heart attack. Depending on which blood vessel it goes to in the brain, will deter and, and that part of the brain that needs that blood doesn't work anymore. And so if that controls your speech, you have a difficulty talking. If it controls your motion, and if it's on the left side of your brain, if it controls the part of your brain that helps control your, your muscles, then the opposite side of your body won't move. If it controls, if it controls the, on the heart, if it is the main blood vessel that supplies blood to the heart, which is beating all the time, if it's on that, real, that main one, you go just like that. The first symptom of a heart disease could be death. That's you hear people just go like that. It's called a, it's a heart attack that happens in what's called the left anterior descending on the left main coronary artery. If it happens at the left main, that knocks out the whole left side. The blood can't pump. And when the blood stops pumping, it's done. And it damaged that heart, all that heart muscle. So when you go, and I know I'm taking a lot, but I'm using this opportunity to teach a little bit. Is that all right with y'all? Yes. So what happens when you go to the doctor, and you have an EKG. The only way that the EKG is abnormal is that because you've already had some damage to your heart. But it won't tell you if you're about to. Even if you get on the treadmill, unless you have enough blockage of the artery already to stop the flow to get to certain parts of the heart where it shows up as something that has gone wrong, it won't, it won't show anything. So I'm just saying that when we go, to, we go and get these tests, these tests are only as good as what they look for. It's like taking your car to a mechanic, and all he does is open the hood and tell you to start the car, and then try and figure out what's wrong. What's going, but, he hasn't, but you don't know how long, when's the last time you changed the oil? He don't know when's the last time you had the transmission fluid drain. We don't know the last time you changed your your air cleaner. So it may sound great at that moment because any test you take is only, it only tells you about what's going on at that moment. Doesn't say what's going to happen going forward. So a lot of the stuff that we do, a lot of stuff that we eat, and I'm going to take milk, for example. Milk is the perfect food for cows. Every mammal on the planet, just about, produces milk for its young. Humans do it, dogs do it, cats do it, lions do it. And when the young no longer needs milk from its parent, it doesn't need it anymore. And they are what's called weaned. If we look at sources of, we talk about cholesterol, and there's more than just cholesterol. There's only one place that you get cholesterol. It's from meat and meat byproducts. It's the only place you get cholesterol. So, and milk is a meat byproduct. Cheese is a meat byproduct because it comes from, eggs are meat byproducts they come from. So those are the only places you get it. And there's certain things that we, like, you know, I, I did a course talking about, I looked at the Bible, because I'm trying to right now really work on trying to put the spirit and the physical together. And so in Deuteronomy, there's a whole, I mean, I'm sorry, Leviticus. There's a lot of rules. I look at Leviticus like a public health manual. Okay? Because in Leviticus, it says about eating, you know, people want to talk, they take one little bit about Leviticus, usually it's a chapter about men laying with men, and they, they talk about that. Don't talk about all the times that, you know, if you look at the number of times divorce and infidelity and, and um, uh, uh, what is it called when a man sleeps with another woman? Adultery. You look at the number of times that that meant. And the fact that, you know, if you want to really get technical about it, the number of fibers that should be in the clothes that you wear. But more important, I was, I was interested in looking at shellfish, particularly clams, oysters, and that sort of stuff. And why, why was it prohibited? Well, a lot of these things are what are called filter feeders. So these filter feeders sit at the bottom of the, of the ocean or the, the wherever, 
And a lot of the stuff that we eat are garbage eaters. Catfish, these are all scavengers. Why would you eat anything that eats everything, including garbage? Because that's their job. That's what they do. So some of the prohibitions were for our own health. Because if there are viruses that these things had that are in the water, the, the clams would concentrate these viruses. And of course, a lot of people eat their oysters and stuff raw. So am I talking about everybody should be a vegetarian? But no, if I, but if I send you to Genesis 128, or if you believe in the story of the Garden of Eden, there no chickens in there. <laughs> and if you're going to eat stuff, you know, I talked about, I said about highly processed, and I'm going to take the next question. But what I mean by highly processed, most of us have seen a real whole turkey, at least at Thanksgiving, right? But when you go to the store and you go to the deli and you buy sliced turkey, they take something that's about this long out. And it may even be round. And they put it on the machine and start slicing it, right? When is the last time you saw a turkey breast look like that? That's what I mean when I say processed. And they actually, in 1950s, Nestle's came out with this formula to sell in place of women breastfeeding. And nowadays, if you have a baby, before you even get a chance to breastfeed it, they're trying to shove formula down the baby's mouth. And the, the mother's milk contains all of the antibodies, it contains all of the nutrients. You know, most of us, as black people, don't even contain the enzyme to break milk down which is why we're passing gas and having diarrhea and all this kind of stuff. It's called lactose intolerance because we don't have the, the enzyme to break down the sugar in milk called lactose. In addition, milk is, a number, is another source of cholesterol. And they say, well, you need the vitamin D. Well, most of the vitamin D is put in the milk afterwards. It's called fortified. That's what that word means. So. Do you, should you, am I telling you not to drink milk? If you like milk as a beverage, you want to drink it, drink it. I would much rather see us drink a half gallon of good water a day. Because the thing that the water does, remember I told you about all those organs that purify things? Well, one of the things it needs, our body is 70% water. And what it needs, it needs water to help it to do its job. You know, our, our bodies mirror the earth. And so when we don't drink the water, we make our kidneys work harder. So that's why when you eat a diet that has a lot of meat in it, you'll find yourself oftentimes extremely constipated. Because unless, and when I was growing up, there's, I, there's 10 of us. We didn't even have meat every day. And I'm sure a lot of the seniors in this room grew up that same way. But we had lots of beans, greens, rice, you know. And we went, didn't suffer from a lot of things that people suffer from today. The other thing that what happens is when you don't cook, when you don't go to the store and buy raw and bring it to your house and cook it, you don't know what you eat. So what's happening in our, and not only black homes, but homes, whites, everybody, is we're not cooking at home. And I don't mean preparing. I don't mean opening a box or putting a bag in some water. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about buying fresh greens or in the summertime going out to where you could pick them yourself. And one of the things we also talked about this church is an art that we're going to lose completely and it's called canning. A lot of the older folks know what canning is, but most of the young folks don't know none about what that means. 